So what's going on guys? Thanks a lot for tuning in today. The topic of this video is breaking down five tips to make you a better prepper when it comes to stockpiling food and water. These tips and what I'm going to relate are based on my own personal experience and a lot of mistakes that I made and money that I wasted learning things the hard way. So hopefully this video can help you avoid those mistakes and not basically throw a bunch of money down the drain and yeah, avoid a lot of those frustrations because listen, you're probably a lot like me, you don't like wasting money and unfortunately when you get started with new things, sometimes you end up wasting money just because you don't know what the hell you're doing. So let's go ahead and jump into it starting now. Up first guys, number one, focus on stockpiling water. Now that's a mistake I made right out of the gate. I went straight to stockpiling food and did the water kind of as an afterthought. And the reason why I'm saying that you should focus on stockpiling water first is because your body can only survive three days without water. You can last a lot longer without food. And stockpiling water is a no-brainer. You can start out very simply just by grabbing bottled water. As long as you store those large packs of bottled water in a cool, dark location, shelf life is about five years. It's very easy to rotate water since you obviously probably drink water. So you set up your little rotation schedule, rotate that water out as needed, and you're good to go. Now, moving on to the second way to stockpile water, you can pick up a food grade container. And these food grade water containers come in like the two gallon variety, like what I got floating around right here. And also five gallon, right? So you can fill this up with tap water. And as long as your tap water has a sufficient amount of chlorine in it, the shelf life is kind of indefinite, right? Now you can get a little more detailed with this. You can get a chlorine testing meter to be, you know, 100% sure that the water that you're getting out of the tap is good to go. You can add a little chlorine as needed. But in my experience, like this right here, right? I've had this filled up with water for years, like literally three years this has been filled up with water. And a couple days ago, the water mont line main or something broke in my neighborhood and there's water just like all over the place and I knew immediately the water was going to get shut off. So I grabbed this, I threw it in the fridge, I immediately had two gallons of nice cool water straight from the tap and I was able to have this available and I actually used it because the water was off for an extended period of time. I think it was off for about four or five hours. Now I don't know what other people were doing in my neighborhood but I was good to go with what I had right there. Now, of course, with a container like this, you can see that it's clear. So just like those water bottles, you wanna store this in a dark location that has a pretty consistent temperature so you avoid algae buildup. And when you need to get to your water, it's not contaminated. And you're like, wow, I had this really great plan to stockpile water. Now it's basically worthless for drinking purposes. So. I usually go with the bottled water and containers of the two and five gallon size. Now, of course, you can get a lot bigger than this, like what I did in the past where I got this great idea. You know, I was on Google and I was looking at uh, those DIY water collection, you know, rainwater collection projects, right? Where you get the, the big blue 55 gallon drum and you do your little project and you collect rainwater. So I got super excited about this, right? Didn't really pay attention to the details. Jumped on Craigslist, picked myself up like three barrels got back home and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this project. And I cracked open a barrel and I was immediately hit in the face with this massive blast of perfume because I didn't pay attention and I didn't get a food grade barrel. So then I ended up wasting money and taking up a bunch of unneeded space in my garage with these blue barrels, these blue drums that I literally had no use to. So if you're gonna go that route, I, I, I'm not advocating against it. I think it's a great project. It's one that I need to do myself but make sure you get those food grade drums. That is absolutely vital because if you don't do that, you're just wasting money and you'll end up in the situation that I was in. Now, you can even get bigger than this. You can get 500 gallon containers. You can get a thousand gallon container. But um, for me, I don't have the space for containers of that size. So the bottled water containers of the two and five gallon size like this, even those large water cooler style containers are absolutely perfect for my needs. And then like I said, in the future, setting up one of those uh, rainwater collection systems is also on the agenda. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next topic, which is obviously food. Number two, starting with the tip about the food, because I learned in my experience that I probably should only stockpile food that I'm actually going to eat. And here's why. 
So here I am, years ago, new prepper, super excited about stockpiling food. I told my wife, I said, listen, every single time you go to the store, pick up some canned goods, canned veggies, canned meat, big boxes of Raymond, all that kind of good stuff. So I had all that stockpiled, and I was feeling pretty good about myself. Set up my rotation plan, and when it was time to rotate my food into my current stocks, I realized that I really didn't like eating Raymond a whole lot. Like, I literally cooking up a giant block of sodium just wasn't my M.O. And then I was like, oh, well, I got this, you know, these, these canned meats here that once I cracked them open, literally looked like dog food, smelled like dog food, and tasted like dog food. So, and then I had the veggies, which, ah, I like fresh veggies. And if I have an opportunity to eat fresh veggies, that's what I'm going to do. So basically, long story short, my short term, term my short term food supply ended up being donated to Goodwill. And, you know, that's nice and everything. I'm sure somebody got some use out of it, but I wasted money in that process. So the moral of the story is stockpile food for short-term use that you are actually going to eat. That is the second tip. Now, moving on to the third tip, diversify your food supply. You have short-term food storage, right? That's for the little emergencies, the little power like outages, the natural disasters. Things that, you know, might only max out and last for a week period of time. But the long-term food storage is where things can get interesting and you can have a lot of fun with it. You can go ahead and you can do it, do it yourself. You can go to your local Costco, Sam's Club, any sort of large-scale bulk food warehouse type of place. Get yourself all the staples, rice, beans, sugar, flour, dry milk, all that good stuff. Get yourself some five-gallon buckets some sealable lids, mylar bags, O2 absorbers, and get to work filling those up. Now, through the course of that process, you know, I had a lot of fun, right? And I filled up all these, you know, five gallon um, barrels, or sorry, um, buckets with what I needed, right? And I um, was feeling pretty good about myself. And then I realized that one day I didn't have any rice to eat. I was about to cook my favorite bodybuilder meal, which is chicken, rice, and broccoli but i didn't have any rice here so what did i do i came out here and i was like oh i just grabbed some rice out of my stockpile well there's like a gigantic five pound bag right so that was kind of it didn't make sense to crack open that five pound bag and i thought well you know it would have really been nice if i would have diversified the amount that i was stockpiling maybe a one pound bag two pound bag and a five pound bag so if i needed to jump in here and use it just because i was too lazy to go to the store I didn't have to open up this massive bag of rice. I could easily just grab a one pound bag and be good to go. Now, of course, if you don't want to go the route of packaging your own food, you can just go to some place like Mountain House or My Patriot Food Supply or any place like that, Wise Foods, for example, and go ahead and ramp up real quick. You can get everything from 72 hour food kits all the way up to a year and more. Granted, that's going to cost a little bit of money, but it's easy to do and it just ships right to your house. You don't even have to think about it. You store it away and you have it there available for use in the future. Now, moving on to the next tip. Make sure that some of your food supply is ready for a quick evac. And what I mean by this, let's say you have to leave your house, but you want to bring some food stocks with you. Do you really want to be trying to grab a bunch of canned goods, Grabbing, uh, you know, five gallon buckets, all that. No, that's not going to work out so well. So what I decided to do is go to my local Walmart and get myself a big plastic heavy duty rolling storage bin. And with this, I filled it up with seven days of food and water for my family. So if I do have to leave the house, hey, it's not a big deal. I just throw that bin in the truck and I hit the road. So with that, I have a lot of flexibility where... All of my stuff is literally not just situated here and very difficult to move. The rolling food kit, I think, is a great idea. I'm sure other people have done this before, but I consider it to be my idea because I didn't see anybody else doing it. And to be honest with you, I didn't look. And I just found like, hey, bingo, I should have an opportunity to be able to pack up my stuff real quick and get the hell out of Dodge. And then finally, guys, the last tip is kind of obvious, but it was something that I kind of did as an afterthought, and that was... Having some way to cook my food if the lights are out. So I went to Walmart and I got myself a very simple Coleman two burner stove, some bottles of propane, a little bit of dishware, and some measuring cups. So I was easily able to, in obviously a ventilated area like where I'm at right now, 
set up the stove, crank up the burner, boil some water, and I can easily have meals ready to go if the lights are out versus the pretty much the only other option if you're going to cook, which is start some sort of fire or rely on small like backpacker style cook sets, which doesn't work if you have to supply food, cook food for anybody aside from yourself. And I would actually ar like argue the point that even if you're rolling solo, having that stove and that easy setup just makes sense. And probably the whole investment for the stove and the propane bottles, you know, a few pots and pans and related items was maybe only like $60, to $80. I know it was definitely less than $100. And then I have this available for me if I want to use it in the house or I could stick it in that quickie back food kit for use on the road. All right guys, so that's all I have on the topic. Bear in mind, I'm just hitting the high points on this. You can get a lot more granular in how you do your food preps and how you do your water preps and different options you have available to you. But I just wanted to hit the high points and just kind of make note of the mistakes that I had made. And hopefully you guys can avoid those same mistakes or hey, maybe you've already made those mistakes and learn from them. Whatever the case is guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It definitely helps out the channel quite a bit in getting us seen on YouTube searches. And just, you know, just let me know. Like, how do you guys handle your food preps? Do you start off kind of um, looking at 72-hour food supply and water and then building up from there? Or did you, like, jump right into it and say, hey, give me a year of food supply right off the bat. I'm over here on mountainhouse.com and I'm throwing my credit card in there. So I'm always interested to learn from you guys. That's the great thing about this channel is the input that I get from you. So make sure you tell me what's up with that whole situation, and I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have an awesome day.